Hi, and welcome to King and Tommy teaching no clients space. I'm Tommy. I'm Kang San. And we're here to teach you guys about no clients. So, no clients comes from the word null and client. Null meaning zero and client meaning slow, thus, meaning zero growth or when a population system is not changing over time. So, the purpose of doing this is to identify the steady states where the population won't grow or decrease. In size, and also we want to qualitatively understand how the system trajectories look in a phase plane when the both populations are interacting with each other. So what we have written down right now is a general equation for null clients, where n one dot is how population n one changes over time, and n two dot is how population n two <laughs> changes over time, where r, k, a, and b are all the different parameters. And these parameters are.、Uh, Different population growth rates, initial population sizes, and other parameters, other factors that affect how the population dynamics work. So we're going to work an example with you guys. So what we have written down right now is、uh, two population systems where we have plugged in values for the parameters, and we're going to solve for the null clients. And to do so, the first step is to compute the steady states. And in order to compute the steady states, we have to set Uh, the n1 dot and n2 dot equal to zero as they won't change over time. So the first steady state we're going to solve for is the trivial solution, where n1 is equal to zero and n2 is equal to zero. As you can see from the equations, both of these numbers are being multiplied by n1 and n2 respectively. Thus, if n1 is zero, n1 dot is zero, and if n2 is zero, n2 dot is zero. Thus, giving us our first steady state of zero zero. Woohoo! So now we're gonna look for the intersecting,、uh, the intersecting、uh, steady state. And to do so, we're gonna use a system of equations to solve for the n one and n two at this particular steady state. And now we're just gonna look at the numerators of each of these equations because the all the other factors cancel out when multiplied to the zero. So we have the first forty minus zero point eight n two minus n one from、uh, n one dot. And we have the same thing for n two dot. And to solve for this, we will multiply the first part of the equation with minus five. And that way, we can cancel out the n one and then just solve for the n two. And once we get that n two value, we can use it. To plug it in in the previous equation to solve for the n one value. So now that we multiplied it by minus five, we can just add up everything, and it will give us minus one ten plus three n two equal to zero, giving us an n two value of one ten over three. And if we were to plug this in. Into one of the other previous equations, we'll get a value of thirty-two over three. And you can just do the math and confirm that we actually got the right answers. All right, thus giving us our second steady state of thirty-two thirds, one tenth thirds. Woohoo! Now we're going to compute the la the last steady states.、Uh, so the way we do this is we're going to solve for when n one equals zero and n two equals zero. No, we're we solve for n one equals zero, and then we're going to see how that affects n two system. So given n one equals zero, how does that affect n two dot? So we know that when n one equals zero, the numerator also has to equal zero still. So if we have ninety minus n two. Minus five times zero should be zero, thus giving us n two as ninety, giving us our third steady state of zero ninety. And now we'll approach 
the n2 equals 0 the same way where we have 40 minus n1 minus 0 0.8 times 0 thus giving us an n1 equals 40 and in this case the steady state will be 40 comma 0 so now we found all our steady states so the last thing we need to do is find the intersections so we have we have three points but we're going to need two lines so we need two more points that we can use to graph our null line system so the way we do that is given n1 equals 0 we plug that back into the n1 dot equation So where n1 equals 0, we plug that into the n1 dot equation to see what n2 will equal. So, so that gives us 40 minus 0 minus 0 0.8 n2 is equal to 0. And that gives us an n2 of 50. And then we do the same step for n2 dot. So we have n2 equals 0, so 90 minus 5n1 is equal to 0, thus giving us n1 is equal to 18. 18. Giving us the points 0, 50, and 18, 0. Just a note though, these are not steady states, but these are the intersections between all of our null clients. And these are gonna, we're going to use to help us graph. The null clients. So, so the next step, you guessed it, is to draw graph. null draw. clients. Yeah, I love drawing null clients. All right. So we already drew the null clients for you guys. So sorry to spoil the fun, but as you can see, the dot, the blue dots, are the are the steady states. So you can see 40, 0, 90, 0, 0, 90, 0, 90, uh, 32 thirds, 1 10 thirds, and 0, 0 where we use 50 and 80 18. 18 as we previously calculated and those are the intersections find, between the horizontal and vertical null clines with the two lines all right so, so the next step we need to do is find the trajectory of the null clines and to do that the best way is to plug in numbers within that region of interest to s see what's the behavior of the derivatives of each population. So an example would be to plug in the point 1, 1 in for n1 and n2 and see how that affects n1 dot and n2 dot. We aren't really interested in the actual numeric value, we're just interested in whether or not the, the signs of these derivatives are positive or negative. And so we plug in the points 1, 1, we end up getting n1 dot is a positive value and then two dot is also a positive value Th thus, do this and check your math thus meaning from the point one one the graph is heading positive and to the right and we can do the same thing for each all three other regions so let's say if we want to find how the region between the red and the green line looks like on the bottom right of the graph then we can grab a point like 2010 and just try to see how that would uh, make our derivatives look like so if you if we do the math if we do the math you we can plug in 40 minus 20 which gives us 20 minus point 8 times 10 which is 8 and that would be 20 minus 8 which is greater than, than 0 which is 12 mm -hmm. so that's greater than 0 and if we did the same thing for n2 we'd get it's a value and it's 90 it minus value. that would be my 90 minus 10 which is 80 but minus 100 because it's 5 times 20 and that gives us minus 20 which is a negative like, value a negative value thus the, the trajectory in this region is increasing in n1 but decreasing in n2 
and we can do this for eat all the remaining two sections and it would show some trajectory like these and from these trajectories we can learn a lot about the stability of each steady state. So we, w we need to look at the trajectories of the st steady state. So these ones to look at would be 0, 0, and determine out whether the steady state is stable. Since the only arrow <coughs> is pointing away from it, we can determine that this steady state is unstable. Same thing with the intersecting steady state, where we have one line that is coming in, but we have another line going out, which means that it's unstable. And if we look at all the, all the remaining ones, all the arrows are going into those steady states, meaning that they're both stable. And just as a quick reminder, both the horizontal and vertical lines are null clines as we already solved previously. So an example of a system where uh, this middle point would be a stable steady state. The, tra the trajectories for all the regions must point towards this, the point, thus making this a st stable steady state. But then that would also give us that all the the outer dots would be unstable, but our non-trivial solution would be stable. Scratch that, only the intersecting steady state would be stable. stable. Mm -hmm. That's right, Kang Song. You need to study your notes better. I should. <laughs> All right, and then finally, finally, if you were unsure about the stability of each of the steady states, then one way you can check your work is to linearize a system and check for eigenvalues. And it's something you've already previously done in differential equations in Calc 2, where we get... And in this class. And in this class, where we get eigenvalues, and then eigenvectors, and check for the signs of each eigenvalues. So, if let's say you linearize this system that we all just did and you got negative eigenvalues that means that for that steady state we have a stable a stable point and on the other hand if you get a positive one and a negative one then you'd have a saddle point but that would also be unstable in classification and the last one will be both positive eigenvalues that would lead to uh, unstable spiraling out. All right. Thank you guys for listening to us. And now you're masters of null clines. This has been Kings and Tommy, Tommy teaching null clines space.